Hey, my name is Ronald. This is my software journal. Let's just get into it. Here's the first problem of the recursion series. Personally, I never had to use recursion in my professional career as a software engineer, but I see the benefits of using it for solving problems. Let's get into the fourth problem of this series, swap nodes and pairs. Here's the problem. Given a linked list, swap every two adjacent nodes and return its head. All right, so for example one, we have a one, two, three, four, and it's a number one node, number two node, number three node, number four node, and then you're pretty much swapping these adjacent heads. So we swap one with two, so now you have two, one. Then the next one, we wanna do three and four, so we wanna swap three and four right here. So the output should give us two, one, three, four, three. All right, cool. Now let's get into example two. Given that we have a head that is null, there's nothing to swap. So we want to return null. All right, it's pretty much self-explanatory. All right, example three, we have a head that has one. You only have one node in it, so there's no adjacent node. So in return, we just return that head one. So we have some constraints here. With the number of nodes in this linked list will be between zero and 100. And the values will for the nodes will be between zero and 100. So pretty much what recursion is, in order to build out a, a problem in recursion, it has to be a base case. And then there also has to be some type of recursion relationship. So that's what we're, we're gonna try to figure out here. First, we're gonna figure out, the first approach that we need to figure out is how we're gonna solve like the basic cases for when the head is null, and also when there's no adjacent node next to that head if it's just one head or one node. All right, so for the first step, we're just gonna make a helper class that's gonna be handling the logic. So first thing we're gonna do is create a private method with a return of list node. We're gonna call this swap. It's gonna have a parameter node and it's gonna take the parameter head into it. And then for the actual calling function, we're gonna do a link node. We're gonna call, give it a new instance of node. And then when it swaps everything, we want to return that new node instance with all the swap nodes. So for the second step, we need to solve for the simple cases in which the head is null and in which there's only one node in that linked list. Let's solve for that. So first we're going to write a statement here. This one, this first if statement is going to be when the head is equal to null. Then another if statement saying if head.next is equal to null. All right, so for the first one, if it's equal to null, we just want to return null. And that, that's what we're going to be doing here. Just want to return null. And then when head.next is equal to null, we just want to return the head because at that point, there's no other adjacent nodes. Yeah, so return head. Like with most recursion problems, there's base cases, and this is pretty much what these two things are. These are the base cases in which we're solving for the problems. So whenever we call this function, these are gonna be the base cases in which the recalling function is gonna get resolved. And you're gonna see this later when I explain more. All right, so number three, now if those particular instances aren't solved when they first get called, when the method gets called and there is an adjacent. So we need to figure out how can we get the current head and then the head.next, the next node, to swap with each other. First, we need to store the next node into a new instance of a node because this is gonna be the returning node. That's what we're gonna do here. All right, so we're gonna do link node equals to head.next node. So the next thing is we need to make it where the head swap positions with the two. If it was just one and two, then the head dot next, then it would just be null next because there's no other adjacent nodes. But in this case, we wanna make sure that's the case. So this is where we're gonna do the recursion. We're gonna do head dot next equals swap. And then we want to go to the next next value. So if we did have like a, two other nodes, let's just say one, two, and then there's three, four, we want to go to the next adjacent nodes and swap those two as well. So that's what we're doing here. That's why we're putting head.nextnext next into the swap function. Because we want to go to the next adjacent nodes and swap those. So that was four, forgot to say it. But all right, number five, then we want to set the new node next to the previous head. So in order to do that, we wanted to do a node.next 
because we want to set the next value, the next node to now the new present node, head node to the previous head node. And then finally, we want to do a return node. So if we're looking at an example, we have a linked list node that is one, two, three, four, and then null, null being the end of that linked list node. The call function gets called at head one. The node gets set for node two because head.next is two. And then the head.next node is set to results of swap of node three. This is when the recursion starts until we hit a base case. Then the next call of the swap function does the following. Head is now three. The node gets set to node 4. The, the head.next is set to results of swap null because there's no more nulls at head.next next of 4. And then now the next call of the swap function hits the base case where the head is equal to null. So it will return the null and then results of all the previous call functions get resolved. The time complexity of this particular algorithm is O of N, and it's because the number of nodes in the linked list would be the maximum amount of nodes that we actually have to swap. It's actually more like O of N divided by two. The space complexity is O of N, and you can think of it like this. The first call pretty much doesn't allocate like additional space per se, and it's gonna be constant space for each call but for each call function in that stack, it's gonna be n times the number of nodes in that call. Then the basic complexity has to be O of one times O of n, which gives us O of n. That's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Let me know down in the comments below, like what's the best way to explain time complexity and space complexity of recursion problems. I mean, I got a very basic sense from leak code and then some other resources that I will provide in the description below. So yeah, just let, let me know. And also, you know, let me know what's the best solution for this problem. And then until next time, peace. Mm -hmm.